Hi, I'm Scott Mueller, author of Upgrading and Repairing PCs, the world's number one computer hardware book for over 20 years. In this segment, I want to talk about the history and evolution of the hard disk drive, including both the form factors that the drives were available in over the years, as well as a little bit on the transition from hard disk drive technology, magnetic-based storage, that is, to solid-state drives using flash memory. Well, the hard disk was first invented by IBM in 1956. In, at that time, IBM released a, uh, introduced a computer system called the RAMAC 305. RAMAC stood for Random Access Method of Accounting and Control. And the drive actually came as part of this whole computer system. So what was known as the RAMAC drive was a, the, the first hard drive. It had platters that were two feet, 24 inches in diameter, and a stack of them 50 tall. As you can see, that was much larger than the platters in a typical modern hard drive. In fact, this drive was basically the size of a refrigerator, and it stored five megabytes worth of data. Another couple interesting uh, uh, technical bits about that drive, it had only two heads. Now, a modern drive normally has a head above and below each platter, so all the heads move in unison, and you can instantly access any of the surfaces on the disk. Not so on the RAMAC drive. It only had only two heads, so the heads had to navigate to the platter where the data uh, that was desired needed to be read or, read or written. So as you can imagine, access time was very slow. The heads had to retract, move to a different platter, and insert over the surface of the, the disk. Another interesting uh, little technological bit about that drive, the heads floated on a cushion of air. Now, on modern drives, heads float on what is called an air bearing. That is, as the platter spin, they carry a current of air with them, and that air wedges itself underneath the surface of the uh, head. The head is kind of, in, in some ways, shaped like a ski, and it actually skis on this cushion of air. And they call this cushion an air bearing. Well, back then, the, the, the platters didn't spin fast enough to generate this air bearing. They hadn't invented that technology yet. So what they did use, though, was they had air lines running to the heads, and they had air jets in the heads forcing the heads up off the platters. And think of it, in fact, much like an air hockey uh, table and puck, only in this case it's the puck that had the air jets causing it to lift off the surface of the, uh, of the platter. So very uh, interesting technology there. Well, then, in 1961, IBM released a, a drive called the 1301 Disk Storage Unit. Now, this unit was the first one that had the faster spinning platters where the heads actually floated on the air bearing. This is the same technology that modern drives use. Another thing that it had was it had a head for each platter surface. So if there were 10 platters, there would be 20 heads. Um, on that drive, and the heads didn't have to retract completely away from the platter. So access time was dramatically improved, and so was the data transfer rate, because the platters were spinning faster, the data could come underneath the heads faster, at a faster transfer rate. Continuing on, in 1973, IBM released a drive called, the, was codenamed the Winchester. It was actually released as the model 3340. Now, this drive was originally supposed to have 30 megabytes of internal uh, fixed capacity. That is, the, the 30 megabytes worth of platters that were fixed and non-removable. And then also 30 megabytes worth of removable platters, like in a pack. Uh, because it had the so-called 3030 designation, they codenamed it Winchester after the 3030 Winchester rifle cartridge. Well, the innovation in this drive was that the... Uh, the platters were in a sealed environmentally, you know, sealed chamber. Now, not airtight. Air could move in and out of the uh, 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 chamber in order to um, have the air pressure be the same as the ambient air pressure. But what we had was a filtration system that prevented dust and, and dirt and particles from interfering with the head and the platter um, interface. So this, was, uh, this technology is what's found in all modern drives. That is, all modern drives have a sealed head disk assembly that uses air filters to equalize pressure and yet keep the dust and dirt and debris out. Because of this, a lot of modern drives have been called Winchester drives. In fact, the term you know, back in the 80s was commonly uh, used. We, we called hard drives Winchesters or Winchester drives. And that all came from that original IBM in 1973. Well, then we can fast forward up to 1981 when the PC first came out. By the time the PC came out, we finally had smaller, you know, PC-sized hard drives available, not refrigerator size. Now we had something that we could fit into a small computer. The drives available in 1981 were 5 megabytes and 10 megabytes in capacity. So as you can see, uh, in, in, you know, that number of years, drives had 
condensed quite a bit, and the, yet the capacity had stayed relatively the same as far as maximum capacity. Now, let's go over the different form factors that uh, are, were available for PC-based drives over the years. So starting in 1981, what kind of drive would you get in a, in a PC at that time? Well, the first drives used in PCs had a form factor which was known as a five and a quarter inch full height form factor. And this is an example of that here. And it was so named for the platter sizes being roughly five and a quarter inches. Not exactly, well, and I'll get into that uh, more, more later, but uh, very close to that. As you can see, this is a big, uh, heavy drive. And in fact, it weighed 5.5 pounds uh, typically back then, which is more than many laptops today. These drives were also very expensive. Uh, this drive, for example, cost uh, $1,695 for just the drive itself and another $695 for the controller card that went with it. And back then you had to have a separate controller. The controller was not built into the drive as it is in, in modern drives. So these uh, types of drives were available over the you know, first number of years from like 1981 to uh, the mid to late 80s. And they gradually were available in larger and lar larger capacities until we had these into a couple of hundred megabytes in capacity. Okay, what happened after that was a, the, the form factor changed to what was called a five and a quarter inch half height. And this is an example of that. As you can see, it's, well, it's pretty much almost exactly half the height of the five and a quarter inch full height. Now with this type of drive, the idea here was that we could stack two of these in the same place as one of the full height drives. So um, computer you know, chassis, which were designed for the full height drives, could now have two drives where one used to go. In fact, this drive here happens to be uh, kind of a legendary drive. This is a Seagate ST225, which was the most popular drive of its day. This drive was released in 1985 and had an amazing lifespan. It was actually on the market for more than five years and is probably the number one selling single disk drive model ever released. So it's kind of a, a, a sort of a classic. I, I think of this as kind of like the Schwinn varsity of uh, hard disk drives. Uh, very heavy, kind of clunky, uh, but very durable um, and very, very popular. Now, after the five and a quarter inch half height, the market shifted to three and a half inch drives. This is one of the early three and a half inch drives. Now, three and a half inch drives, uh, the first ones actually came out in 1983, but they didn't start to become popular until more of the late 80s. That was when the desktop PC system started transitioning from the, you know, the five and a quarter inch full height or half height to the three and a half. And the early three and a half inch drives were known as, you know, three and a half inch full height drives. They, they were taller than the drives we, we know of today. Uh, these drives also were some of the first drives to get integrated controllers. We'll talk about interfaces in another segment, but uh, what happened basically was that clunky, bulky controller card that was formerly a separate you know, piece of circuitry was now finally integrated into the drive as part of the logic board of the drive. And that meant for you know, higher data transfer rates being possible, greater reliability, signal, signal integrity, and um, um, you know, basically higher speed and performance. Now, three and a half inch drives then progressed to what was called a third height version. You can see uh, an example of that here. And these were only one inch high. The original three and a half inch drives were like 1.63 inches, and this is just one inch. So we call this a one third height uh, three and a half inch drive. And this is the form factor that's actually still popular today. So even though three and a half inch drives, the form factor originated in the 80s, it's still the most popular drive form factor today used in, in, in most desktop systems. So three and a half inch, one inch high, is this form factor. Well, when laptop uh, systems came out, they needed a smaller form factor drive. So what was introduced was the two and a half inch form factor. And this is an example of that. Now, some of the first two and a half inch form factor drives came out in 1988. And they weren't very popular at the time, but by the 90s, the two and a half inch drives started to really gain in popularity and became the staple, the standard form factor for especially laptop systems and what we call small form factor desktops, you know, uh, very thin and light desktop systems. Now, two and a half inch form factor drives have been available in a number of different height 
form factors over the years. So if you say, you know, two and a half inch drive, it can actually mean quite a few different things. This is one of the early ones uh, from the early, this one's from the early 90s, and this one is 19 millimeters tall. As you can see, it's, it's a fairly thick drive. Here's another example. This one is only 12 and a half millimeters tall. In fact, 12 and a half millimeters are still available in some drives uh, today, particularly the largest capacity versions. Now, the most popular form factor, though, for the two and a half inch drives today is the eight and a half inch uh, tall version. I'm sorry, nine and a half inch tall version, which is what I have here. So I have a 19, a uh, 12 and a half, and a nine and a half. And the nine and a half millimeter drive today makes up about 90% of the two and a half inch drive market. But there are actually two thinner versions available. There is also an eight and a half and even now a seven millimeter thick two and a half inch drive. Now the thing uh, you need to know about the two and a half inch drives is that you can always replace a thicker one with a thinner one, but you can't necessarily go the other way. That really depends on the you know, chassis of the system that you're putting it into. The, you know, if it's a laptop, for example, does it really have the room for the thicker drive? Um, for example, today most laptops come with uh, nine and a half inch tall drives like this one here. However, there are now on the market some one terabyte and even one and a half terabyte two and a half inch uh, form factor drives, but they are in the 12 and a half millimeter uh, thickness. So they will not fit in many of the laptop systems that are on the market today. You'll have to check that to be sure. So keep that in mind. And then some of the uh, really thin systems like the tablet type computers or the netbook computers, a lot of those are using the eight and a half millimeter or even the super thin seven millimeter thick two and a half inch drive. So keep that in mind. Now is that uh, the end of the road? Is that how small drives became? No. There was actually an even smaller form factor. This was the 1.8 inch form factor. This uh, was actually released in 1991 and has been available in capacities up to about 320 gigabytes. It was originally designed to be in the format of a what's called a PC card or a card bus card. This is the kind of card you would plug into the, you know, the card bus slot on a laptop. Um, these drives also became popular internally in uh, the netbook type, the very small laptop uh, systems, as well as even many of the early MP3 players, uh, those that had internal hard disks, used a lot of the 1.8 inch drives. Um, is, is, is that it? No. Drives even got smaller than this. After the 1.8 inch drives, we had 1 inch hard drives. And they were in the form factor of what's called a compact flash adapter. Now this is not actually a hard drive. This is a solid state drive flash-based solid-state drive, but it is the exact same form factor of the one-inch micro drive released by IBM. Now the micro drive uh, came out originally in 1999, and at that time, flash memory had not yet achieved the density and capacity to match. So this was used by, uh, uh, for example, in some cases, professional photographers who had the high-end uh, digital SLR cameras, which used compact flash memory, and they could get higher capacity in that micro drive hard drive than they could with a flash-based card. But what has happened since uh, 1999 is that flash memory density and performance have improved dramatically, such that the uh, available capacities of the solid state flash based uh, drives have succeeded or superseded the micro drives. So micro drives have uh, pretty much been discontinued and are no longer available. So this is really one of the first areas where flash memory uh, has completely replaced a particular hard drive form factor. Hard drives did, however, even get smaller than that. This is the size of the smallest hard drive that had been produced. Uh, Toshiba actually produced these. These were 0.85 inch platters. Now the one inch platters were the size of a quarter. This drive was the size of a postage stamp and it was available in up to four and eight gig versions. Well, what happened was it, ca it came out in 2004, had a very short life on the market because by that time flash memory storage had superseded it dramatically in capacity and performance. This, for example, is a 32 gig card and you can now get 64 gigabyte and even larger uh, uh, SD uh, memory cards. So why would you want to have a four or an eight gigabyte hard drive and have the mechanical reliability problems that might be associated with that when you can have a solid state memory drive that is uh, significantly larger in capacity, better performance and durability. Well really what we are seeing now is that since 2009 
the flash memory based solid state drives have started to really come on strong in the marketplace. It was 2009 when solid state drives first surpassed the performance of hard drives in desktop and laptop computers. Now, I've you know, been in the computer industry since the beginning, and every year I used to hear, oh, yeah, you know, next year hard drives are going to be obsolete. It's going to be you know, memory RAM drives, solid state drives. Um, I also heard optical drives were going to replace hard drives. Well, hard drives have been going strong for some 55 years since the first one was invented, and some 30 years since the start of the PC business, and flash based drives still haven't reached uh, mainstream status. I do, however, think that their time is coming. And that really starts with you know, the fact that the modern drives now, solid state drives, have surpassed the performance of hard drives. So if you really need that performance and are willing to pay the premium price, solid state drives are the way to go. In the next few years, though, as solid state drives become more and more popular, the price will fall and we'll start to see them coming into more and more mainstream products. Maybe in five to ten years from now, we'll see solid state drives actually replacing uh, uh, you know, magnetic-based hard disk drives in the mainstream. Well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this look at the uh, sort of the evolution of the hard drive over the years and some of the different changes in sizes and uh, form factors. Now, just to summarize some of these changes, maximum storage went from 10 megabytes in a five and a quarter inch drive like this in 1981. Now you can get up to four terabytes in a three and a half inch, uh, one inch high drive like this, up to four terabytes. So that's an, an amazing increase in capacity. In fact, today drives smaller than 80 gigabytes are rare. You can also get up to one terabyte uh, storage in laptop size two and a half inch drives like this. In fact, right now, the popular form factors on the market are the three and a half inch and the two and a half inch drive. This is still what we use most of, desktop systems and laptop systems, are, are using these drives commonly today. And if you're going with solid state drives, they'll have these exact same form factors, just so they can fit in place of the hard drive. They'll use the same form factor physically for the drive unit itself, and even have the same uh, electrical interface, so the cabling will be the same. What else has changed? Well, data transfer rates. Um, hard drive transfer rates back in the early 80s with this uh, big guy here were under 100 kilobytes per second. Modern drives like these can transfer over 100 megabytes per second on average. That's an increase of over 1,000 times. The other thing that happened is the seek time has decreased. These old drives here, this had an average seek time of like 85 milliseconds. That's the amount of time it takes the heads to go from one track to the other. Modern drives can drop that to as little as 3.3 milliseconds. So that's a dramatic decrease in the amount of time it takes to move the heads. The other thing is cost. As I mentioned, this old five and a quarter inch drive cost me $2,390 back in 1983 when I bought it. That's equal to uh, more than $5,200 today. That's quite an expense. I mean, back then, uh, I mean, that was like buying a small uh, a used car, for example. That cost more than, I, I could buy two high-end laptops for, for that price. So as you can see, a hard drive was a very expensive component back in the day. Nowadays, they've become really a commodity item. You can get one terabyte, three and a half inch drives for $50. Two terabytes are $100, and three and four terabytes are usually, it's about $50 a terabyte for the available capacity. So storage has really become cheap. The amount of money that I spent on a hard drive you know, back in the 80s versus what you spend today is just, it's unbelievably uh, uh, less. So, uh, with, with all that in mind, you know, keep in mind that uh, hard drives are still uh, the most popular form of mainstream storage, yet we are seeing solid state drives coming on strong and possibly in the next five to ten years we'll see them become mainstream.